Hello, I'm Lauren and welcome to Improving the World. I'm an international improviser based in Hong Kong and I talk to amazing women of improv all over the world. Today I speak with Xiao Shen Wu, a Taiwanese improviser based in Taipei, Taiwan. We are looking at having difference, finding uniqueness, and how improv is unique within the Taiwan performance scene and also out with it. I hope that you enjoy. Hi. Xiao Shen, hello, how are you? Hi, Lauren. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you pronounce my name perfect. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now you can check my other Taiwanese pronunciation. Xiao Long Bao. Oh, yes. Yeah. Was it good? Yes, yeah, good. I think it's okay. So, you are the artistic director of Guts Improv in Taipei, in a country that I love. I love Taiwan and I love Taipei. And I'm already mad right now that I'm not there at this market <laughs> eating the food of Taipei because it's mwah. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, we are talking today about sort of two different things. You have a background in theater management, but also about the unique style that the guts performers in Taipei have, and maybe looking at Taiwan's performance a little bit. First, how is improv different from other performance styles in Taiwan? Hmm. There's one word, it's very important, it's fun. That's the first feeling me as a Taiwanese, almost 20 years ago, when I was in San Francisco, I got a C improv. That's the first word that come to my heart. It's fun. I just want this fun happen in Taiwan. So maybe I think that's a good example what I feel about other theater performers in Taiwan. There are a lot of professional theater just so many shows and performers and theater companies. I don't want to say we are lacking fun, but we do need more in the theater world. When you say fun, I think it's a small word that means a lot. As an example, I'm thinking about Chinese opera, and I think Chinese opera is kind of fun because it's so big and dramatic and crazy. It might be a little bit ridiculous in a beautiful way, but it's not exactly silly, goofy and stuff. It, when you say fun, mm -hmm. do you kind of mean silly? and relaxed for the audience to be able to interact with the improvisers be part of the creation in the theater most of the audience is sitting in the audience space they only get to see things and not interact with all uh, those performers on stage so i think that's something very important for people willing to go to the theater they feel they are part of the creation they can say anything or do a little bit to participate that's something unique about improv so different from other performers you're making me think about, especially in the UK, there's a style called pantomime. They call it panto for short. It's theater and it's scripted, but especially for children and the audience is participating. So they yell because they talk to the performers and they tell them maybe there's a scared child in the show and the bad person walking behind them and the kids go, behind you, behind you. And they go, what, what? What? You know, this kind of thing. Specific engagement with the audience and everybody knows the style. So do you have anything like that in Taiwan? For children theater, probably, yeah. but yeah. not for adults. I feel that most of the theater in Taiwan are non-comedy. Uh, we have some comedy, but we still need more development for comedy. Comedy in Taiwan is not that mature. Or some of the people who love theater or some of the theater professionals, they think theater should be serious. So I feel like improv is serious too, but we are serious about this art form, but we brought fun to the audience. You brought it and you're teaching it to people and helping to create a community because it's new. Maybe other art forms are more dramatic and a little less fun. Do you think that the improv in Taiwan is different than in other maybe more Western countries in Europe and Canada and the US? I feel like 
like the way we work together, our company. That's something I feel it's the most. Different thing when I went to other countries to participate a workshop or see the improv shows, talk with other improvisers from other countries. If people feel that there's something different in our group to other Western countries, I feel that the way our group work is kind of different or unique.、Hmm. <laughs> Why? How does your group? <laughs> yeah, tell tell me more. Why is your group functioning in a unique way?、Uh, What are you thinking about?、Um, all the improvisers I work with right now, we we work together for more than ten years. Wow! Everyone, yes, they are all theater professionals. That means they are actors. They are doing theater education. This feeling is coming from comparison, right? I feel like my group they are more like doing theater serious as a professional. When I went to other countries, I was so surprised to find out that most improvisers I get to meet in Western countries they are not theater professional. They have other day jobs. And、uh, also, <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying this good or bad or high or it's just oh, I I just realized that's so different. Yeah, like because there's no money, there's not enough money. <laughs> I I have yeah, to pay yeah, my rent. <laughs> yeah, that's also a thing that I was also surprised knowing that in the United States, most of the improv theater don't pay improvise. I was not, so far, not enough.、Right. <laughs> yes, yes. I was trying to build a group for my theater, so I create some of the ways we are doing things together. Many years later, when we went out and doing international festival exchanges, and we realized, oh, okay, the way we work is so different from many other countries. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times. When we were in other countries, we we're like a group, and as a group, we are meeting other individual improvisers. I was having lunch with a friend of mine today, and she's an actress. She said, "I don't know how you get everybody to come to rehearsal every week and perform at all the shows." And I was like, "What?" So we pay everybody. Don't you worry. But she said. It's just so hard. She's doing another project in a play, and people don't show up, and they don't come, and they don't take it so seriously. And I just thought that was so crazy. So I totally understand because our perspective is that we are a family. Our improv company is a family. I know everybody's、mm-hmm. husbands and wives and partners. We spend time together. We holiday together. We love each、mm-hmm. other, and so we work together and we take it very seriously. And we love what we do together. So I understand、mm-hmm. one person floating around, and they have no family, and they don't do、mm-hmm. it all the time. You're like, what are you doing? What's that? Right? Is that? <laughs> yeah. I don't think that individual improvisers going to festivals are strange or. Anything. I just、yeah. feel like、hmm, when we, as a group, going out to、hmm. do stuff and meeting other improvisers, I realize there's something different afterwards about ourselves to other、yeah. improvisers. Do you capitalize on that when you go to an international festival? Do you make sure that you do something really unique so that you are standing out? Actually, first of all, we haven't really go to many international festivals. We went to Australia. Macau. We also went to as a smaller group some of the apply improv conference. Because you have a background in theater management, you are a trainer and you do perform sometimes. But when you're at home in Taipei, you're really not performing on stage very much. So you're looking at the logistics and how you run things. So whether or not it's about being unique in Taipei and standing out to get an audience, do you have thoughts、mm-hmm. from a management? Perspective about how you make a brand and how you are unique, so that you have customers and interest. You've kept people for ten years. That's amazing. When I do things, I didn't think that I want to be unique. Maybe because I have a theater major in college and theater management master degree. The way I think things should be done 
it's professional theater standard. When I create my own theater company, I do think they should be <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't think about I wanted to do create a unique theater company, but I also know that improv was so new 15 years ago. I'm not sure how far we can go. So I make sure all the improvisers invited into my group. They love this art and they do want to do this thing. I have love for the, this art. It's the most important thing. I make sure that they are not here just because there's some opportunity to perform on stage. They are people who are willing to keep learning, make himself or herself to be a better artist to create this art. That's the kind of people I look for. <laughs> yes. So hmm. I'm not like sure that. if I'm answering your question. Of course you are. <laughs> because improv was novelty, it could maybe almost sell itself if you do it really well. Mm -hmm. What can you do as the theater manager, performer, the improv company? What can you do to support improv so that it can just sell itself, so that it's just fun? Keep doing things. I think it's important. I love to see improv happening in Taiwan. So I create this group. And when I have this group of people I can work with, we wanted to perform more. So I create this theater space that it's our own. We can perform weekly. Having a space is a big step for us. It happened seven years ago. I think. But before that, we also perform, but not weekly, maybe uh, bi-monthly or monthly. We keep running workshop. We keep performing. What I feel from our workshop participants and our audience, their feedback, they can feel our love to improv and we are serious about improv. And that's, I, I guess that can show them something that they know if they wanted to know more about improv, if they like to see good improv, they should come to Gus Improv. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's improv. Buy your tickets now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just keep keep doing things. If you performed in English or in Chinese, do you think that it would be different? Be different. It would. Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because the language is challenging. And okay. uh, for our improvisers, they have various ability in English. Yeah. So when we yeah. perform in Australia, we do like have and have some English and we also speak some Chinese. When we rehearse for this format, so challenging, we were like, <gasps> and we realized we should use more body language. Mm -hmm. But we also realized we should not be affected by the language. We should be influenced by the language differences. Mm -hmm. So we try to use more body language. If we can see we have difficulty communicate with each other, we can jump between two languages and figure out everything <laughs> on stage. So when we were invited to Singapore, they say we can perform in Mandarin. <laughs> we were so happy because <laughs> there are some Mandarin speaking populations in Singapore. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> we should go to Singapore. Okay, now's the time. If you could talk to the younger version of you, the improv community, someone who's never tried improv before and they are watching this video, what are your words of wisdom? So I pick one or whatever you want. I just say it to inspire you. You could talk to anyone you want to. You could talk to your dog. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> No, it's not easy. Okay, I'll try a version of myself. Mm. Um, Mm, maybe um, don't be afraid when you are trying to do something new. No one has done 
things like that. <laughs> Maybe you're questioning yourself, but you realize all of those things you want to do or you have done are good things. There's no wrong thing to do. All the things happen will be a good thing back to you.、Mm. Yeah. yeah, in your heart. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> okay, that's something for. Younger version of myself. Okay, maybe I I can also try to speak to the community. Okay, infra community <laughs> of the world. Yeah, yeah.、Mm. Hmm. I'll probably say something crazy like we are very interested in going to different countries and be part of international festivals, but we were probably having problems speaking fluent English. <laughs> so, but we are still doing good improv. So, if you are interested in seeing some good improv in Taiwan without fluent English,、hmm. come <laughs> look for Gats Improv. <laughs>、uh-huh. I like that you made this into、yeah. a sales opportunity. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this is a good foray. So, how can people find you if they are in Taipei or just on the internet, see shows or pictures, or if they want to come take a workshop? How can people find you? Gutsimprov. dot com. G U T S I M P R O V. <laughs> and we also have a Facebook page, and then we also have YouTube channel. Actually, <laughs> because of the. Coronavirus. We start making some videos to introduce Impra to more people. Yes, please. Yes, please. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so very much. Thank you for your time and your energy.、Yeah. So wonderful talking to you and hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lauren. Oh,、so、good to talk to you. And I am looking forward to seeing you in Taipei. I'll see you at the market. I'll meet you in five minutes. We'll go get dumplings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is improving the world. I'm Lauren, and there's more where that came from. Bye, everyone. So, did you love the video? If you did, please say kind and wonderful things in the comments down below, and you can subscribe if you're feeling sassy, and look for more improving the world. Thanks.